Hello, viewers, subscribers, new channel finders. Once again, back at you with a, a controller repair slash maintenance video. This video was originally uploaded to my Valhalla's Demise gaming channel. Um, it had a horrible voiceover. And I want to see what I can do to fix that and hopefully make this video a bit more useful. Um, it had a lot of time lapse in it and really was not very good for explaining anything about what was going on. One of the hardest things when dealing with an Xbox controller, other than having the uh, correct bit for your screwdriver, which is a T8, I'm pretty for sure, Torx, is getting these little back plates off here, as you saw me struggle with them, especially if it's a newer controller. It can be quite tedious to deal with. But once we get that apart and get the uh, screws out of the back and everything, the face plate comes off. And from there, the uh, back plate will lift off as well. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Um, when I had recorded this originally, I had never taken a controller further apart than just like taking the faceplate off and cleaning it as far as an Xbox One controller goes. We can set the rumble motors to the side and there's a few screws in the little daughter board, you might call it, on the back here and remove those a couple also in the main motherboard that has the uh, face buttons and stuff attached to it the wires that run to the rumble motors run around the front of the controller in these little like tracks and that's also a little tedious to deal with you they run under little clips and stuff Getting them out isn't too bad, but I would suggest having tweezers handy to help feed them back into those channels. Got some more screws in the motherboard. Take those out. And you also want to be careful here because sandwiched in between the mother the two boards is the headphone jack and it just sits in there it's not soldered in or anything it's just like a floating piece that's held together with the uh, pressure of the boards and the screws you'll see a little later in the video as i try to figure out like, what what is this thing so Lifting the uh, front board out is a little tedious. Um, spudger's pretty much required. And it like goes down and locks up into the top of the controller where the uh, USB port and everything is connected and like the um, sync button is that on it. But once you manage to pry all that out, you can get to it. And this controller had um, milk spilt into it so um, you can deal with that in a couple of ways I wanted to make sure it was dry I cleaned off the uh, little rubber silicone membrane with some isopropyl alcohol as you see here <laughs> it's very appropriate now to say not a sponsor because that's just the kind of uh, rubbing isopropyl alcohol that I tend to buy from the dollar store but I cleaned all the uh, little spots out on the silicone mat you could also take and wash it with some dish soap and some water you just want to make sure it's dry before you put it back into the console or controller I mean so we'll time lapse the cleaning process up just a little bit so it's not too tedious to bear through I also cleaned the board off because, like I said, there was milk spilt into here. It went down through the uh, 
left joystick and it had caused the uh whatever the back button is i'm old it's the one on the left that's not the xbox button it had caused that one to not be able to uh move up and down um one thing i did not do when i did this repair was uh take the buttons out of the uh sort of skeleton of the controller because it's not really the faceplate. I would suggest doing that and cleaning out where the actual buttons go through the skeletonized part here, the structure of the controller. Cleaning those off with alcohol as well. And you can take the faceplate and the backplate. Uh, the backplate has the battery parts in it but those will just slide right out and leave you with nothing but a shell of plastic and you can take those and actually wash those as well with dish liquid or just soap and water and i find that to work fairly well i, I try to pretty regularly clean my controllers and take them apart and clean them out um like preventative maintenance because over time, skin cells, hair, whatever, it will eventually find its way in there. Newer controllers are sealed a little better than they used to be. But stuff will get in there and get in the joysticks and stuff and cause them to go bad. And a little preventive maintenance with a screwdriver and just, you know, a toothbrush and some uh, a can of little compressed air will... I, I firmly believe extend the life of your controllers quite drastically. So yeah, this is a this is a pretty fiddly controller to uh, put back together, mostly due to that it is just so packed full of stuff. Like there's really not any room in here that is not utilized for something, and I had never taken one this far apart like i mentioned so i kind of struggle here a little bit to figure out how things go back in i forget to put screws back in and have to go back and put the screws back in i'm pretty for sure i edited that part out but it's it's definitely a little bit fiddly but i think that for the price of a new controller it's worth it to just be able to clean it out or to learn to take it apart and do like I did in the GameCube controller video and solder in a new joystick if necessary. They'll pretty much all eventually drift, but I've had good experience with the soldering in a new joystick before. One that I've done myself and one that I had someone else do for me when I was younger on an Xbox 360 controller. And it's always worked well. From what I've experienced, like it, do, it just doesn't cause it to drift putting in a new one. Not that, again, that I have experienced. I suppose you could get a bad replacement joystick out of the box. But here I'm taking some alcohol. And again, I should have taken these buttons out and cleaned them. But I'm taking some alcohol on a cotton swab and kind of rubbing around and letting it run down in beside the buttons. And then I take some canned air is what I call it and a toothbrush and kind of make sure they're dry and cleaned out as well as I can without actually taking them out this is one of those hindsight is 2020 and I should have taken them completely out of the controller I also should not have time lapsed this video <laughs> as much as I did when I originally made it uh, I think it would be better to make videos to actually help people than whatever it was I tried to make with this video originally. So if some of it seems kind of off, it's because I've taken and tried to slow the footage back down. And here's, like I said, one of these little toolkits. Um, I didn't buy it online, so I can't link to it, but I just picked it up at a relatively local Walmart. And it's got like a, a plethora of bits and tools in it for stuff like this and I, I think they're pretty much essential for maintaining controllers and they'll, they'll take pretty much anything any, any electronics apart here I am putting the screws back in 
and forgetting where they go. I have to take that back out. And I believe this is when I realize, oh yeah, this is the headphone jack thing. There's a part here somewhere. That I realized that I forgot to put the headphone jack back in. Good tip that other more better professional sort of YouTube channels would tell you is if you're is if you're unsure when taking uh, something apart to take pictures as you go so you have references to look back through to see where things should be. I usually just kind of wing it. <laughs> I, I, I firmly believe that you can't break what's already broken. I'm sure you actually can, but if it is in a state that is unusable and you, you're thinking that you're pretty seriously going to have to buy a new one, you can't break what's broken. So learning to take it apart and try to fix it is not a bad thing, I think, in, in my opinion anyway. Oh, and uh, one of the screws on the back of the Xbox right there hides underneath the battery pack. There is a seal, like a warranty sticker over it. And uh, you just poke a hole through that and go on. I mean, I don't imagine many controllers tear up during warranty. I don't even know if they tend to have warranties. Not something I've ever paid much attention to, really. But if it's out of warranty or anything, especially with these older controllers like I've been doing now, probably definitely are. Um, you can, you can pretty much fix it. And a spill is not a death sentence for a controller or any electronic, really. And that's pretty much it. Get it nice and prettied up and there it is. So hang around with Techno Babble and, uh, we'll see what else we can take apart and try to fix. And got other videos as well, unboxings and stuff like that. This has been Valhalla's Demise. Remember to be safe, be good. Hope to catch you in the next one.